<laughs> well, I just got back from Fourth Bad Rock finally, and I can definitely say that I really enjoyed it. It's definitely the best Thor trilogy, and even when I think that they think that both Thor and Marvel have finally surprised me, sure enough, I just keep finding new ways to mainlight who sense. It is just as brimming with spectacle and fun from every single frame and aim and also definitely sets the stage for uh, the Infinity War next year here and there aren't going to be any major spoilers in this video. I mean, there's a few things I'm going to have to address, especially given the nature of spoilers in this day and age, age but... I'm definitely going to keep things relatively easy to follow, even with this coming over the cup I'm drinking from. Yeah. So, picking up from the events of Avenger Age of Ultron, I mean, we see Thor playing Chris Hemsworth, you know, trying to, to stop the, the event of Ragnarok, Hawk, which is basically the, the Azure End of Days, which is how that ties in the title. At all. Well, and in the midst of all this, as, as well as the absence of his father, Odin, played by Anthony Hopkins, and he ends up crossing paths with the God's Death Hela, played by Kate Blanchett. And, and not only is his hammer Mjolnir he destroyed, and he, he is also sent to the Wars of Car, which I alluded to in Guns Galaxy Volume 2 earlier this year, here and being put in Galactical Combat, combat on the eyes of the Grandmaster, like by Gareth Goldblum. So, he, you know, he also has to form a lieutenant alliance with individuals such as Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson, his doctor brother Loki, played by Tom Hiddleston, and Ilias, his ally, Bruce Spanner, aka the Incredible Hulk, played by Mark Ruffalo. I mean, if that description sounds totally bonkers, then you would definitely be right. And if you enjoy a like, utter insanity, then this is definitely your movie. Makes sense. Makes sense. I think while the first two Thor films were enjoyable for different reasons, and I think this one definitely might have bucked the trend. And of the third installment being objectively the, the, the least quality one because uh, I've been noticing that a lot with Marvel lately given how this actually is the best installment of Thor trilogy. I'll tell you that. I mean, there are rife, uh, the film is rife with characters, characters that I just as can appreciate. You say there's uh, appearance Doctor Strange, playing Benedict Cumberbatch, watch that movie again before I go and go see this one. Um, Stan Lee has a obligatory cameo as the hairdresser that helps get Thor ready for combat. That, and also we have all sorts of other individuals in this film. Um, I definitely he, he find it hard to keep track of all of them because the direction this film is just suits how insane story has to be for this kind of premise to work. And also, Scourge, played by Carl Urban, is definitely a, a very character that stood out at me quite a bit. I mean, these twin machine guns are very boorish as Guardian Warrior. Mayor and definitely brags a lot about his whole thing. I mean, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but he has a quality to him. Which I know they get behind, I mean that. And also with him being like Judge Dredd and the new Doctor McCoy, I mean the science fiction fiction elements that were introduced in the Dark World definitely blend much better the fantasy ones this time around. Now not only fits it's the fit right in with all the Star Wars, Star Trek, but also the Guardians of the Galaxy films. I mean and. Also, as this event implies, not everyone makes it out. I'm not going to say who specifically. You're going to have to go see the movie if you want to know more. Or just personally. Okay. And 
The special effects are of course very impressive, impressive that a very large budget of $180 million was spent on this film, film and you really can see that given how it's amazing how much the, uh, the effects of the Hulk have gotten in such a short time. I mean, even something in simple, like say, for the fight scenes with Hela, even though, oh, they kind of did something like, say, with Dooku in Star Wars, where they put Lanchet's head in the double's body, uh, the way they do it actually would not be a stretch of the film, um, since, and... The world they brought to us, as I can definitely say, Sakaar is going to be on my favorite list of some Marvel worlds I've had come so far. And I think there's only like one or two scenes actually set on Earth just to suit how totally mad this film is. And overall, there's only one um, character or an element that uh, kind of irked me, that kind of rather confused me since. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, he, he, the character of Korg, who is played by Watiti a bit part, voice him and doing motion capture war on this stone soldier, I mean, I'm sorry guys, I mean, I know a lot of people like this character, but I just could not get into him, I just do not see the appeal in him since, I mean, a lot of people were acting like he was like an ensemble of Korg, and I just don't see it, I mean, he, his style of humor is quite random, but I was actually trying to, trying to try to, trying to hold back groans every time I heard him speak. I mean, his counterpart Meek is actually fine, I mean, mainly because he does not speak at all. Uh, and I kind of like what TV fine. His, his director, he is did a good job with uh, making the film, but to me, it just came off kind of like seeing like Sofia Coppola in Godfather Three or. Hey, or even Michael Bay and Armageddon, I mean, it just felt out of place, something like this. I mean, I guess I'm just way too used to other other comedic characters like, say, Michael Peña and Ant-Man, or Rocket of the Ghost Galaxy films, but... That, however, there is one that actually stood out me more, Topaz. I mean, I, I don't know oh, what the actress's name is, I'll have to look it up soon, but... She was more, I liked her more given how deadpan she was, how deadly serious she took everything, was wearing this, I mean, these, all these, these funny outfits, I mean, trying to do a gold bloom, um, but, um, I actually would like to have seen her get more fandom, but Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie, yeah, I definitely like her character a lot, given how she based her appearance performance off in the Hamilton Terminator 2, I could definitely see that, since she's a flawed, but relatable character, character and has a drive to her, much like Hamilton did in that movie, and also, regarding her lifestyle, I think, given everyone she went through, I mean, she can definitely have anyone she wants, as far as I'm concerned, and anyway, I still think that Phase 3 overall should have been breaking the Marvel Marvel, and it's definitely been a fun experience getting ready for this movie, movie and it's already shattered the record set by its seniors and still going to be looking like it's going to be one of the highest grossing films of the year. There's still more to come. So, I give this film a final rating of four gold booms out of four. And and I'm going to have, once again, another riff on coming attractions and soon. Okay, I think this time, given how I'm still trying to collect myself from the film and its previews, I'm just going to do my coming attractions and release order to make it somewhat easier. I mean... Justice League is definitely going to be the next kind of big budget superhero comic book film for me that even though DC's films have been, been the best lately, I have found something to enjoy in almost all of them so far and I still plan on going. I mean... Maybe not opening night because it's same the Ultra Sun Moon coming out. Like that's gonna be in uh, six days. Hey, hey, sorry, I'm just. But overall, definitely looks like a very cool film. Looking forward to seeing not only the big names like Batman, the Return of Superman, as well as Wonder Woman, but also ones we haven't seen much on film yet, like Cyborg, The Flash, and Aquaman. I haven't seen it much much of the Flash TV show yet, but I heard it's good. Heard. Cyborg, I kind of glad, I kind of like how Ray Fisher's basic performance of Carrie Payton in that TV show I used to watch when I was younger. 
or talk about that another time. Um, and I think Aquaman is probably going to be one that's going to come out of the shadow of the infamous Super Friends incarnation. If they've got this MMA guy playing him, Jason Momoa, Momoa since, and given how if there's anyone who can and take them out of shadow, it's him. And Coco, Pixar film, looks like a very fun family film. Um, I mean, obviously, it's definitely going to be a bit for Thanksgiving. Also, given how it's a month of day of the day, a, a holiday if I'm mentioning, by the way. A, and Leon Critch is saying, man, who directed Toy Story 3. I yeah, have very high hopes for this movie. And given how they went putting in a lot of effort trying to capture the visual motifs and sounds of of their culture uh, and definitely be a visual feast more than one good house coming up for thanksgiving and again even that frozen short might be pretty fun even that's coming from someone who likes that movie movie quite a bit maybe a lot more than other people would and well, given how it's been their biggest hit in some time i'm probably going to keep Keep taking advantage of a while even before the sequel comes out, given how Aeon Dust going to begin in Elden King Hearts 3, given how big it was in Japan, but that's not important right now. I um, mean, and so, oh, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, obviously, Been looking forward to that ever since Force Awakens, and also, oh, we have, I got my ticket ticket pre-ordered for her next month they're going to be going on the evening on the evening of the 14th when it opens opens in my kylo ren costume it went well for halloween when i went to see new it in nevada so definitely see women see again i had to work on doing the scar for my face as well as a face tattoo i had to shave for that and even though i couldn't understand how people feel about it and i definitely can say that i have Quite a bit of faith of both Disney and Ryan Johnson. They're him. They're gonna give him the next trilogy they're working on soon, and um, given how many break, episodes of Breaking Bad he's done, as well as Looper, I've not seen it, but I heard it's really good. You know what I mean, and if they keep making these movies, if they keep making money, and they keep making them till I'm in a, a retirement home, the grandchild right hand, well, that'd just be okay with me. I'm also still working on the Clone Wars movies before, before I go see it since I wanted to do it last year, but things kept getting in the way. Hey, I'm going to be doing both the Tartakovsky and Filoni honey, hey, movies, so keep an eye out for them. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I've already said that I did not, I'm did not really interested in this one. Uh, it just looks like, like filler in between the reboot of Tomb Raider and Uncharted. And and also, I still think that, given how great Chris Vanilla's with books are, I'm still not sure they even need to be made in movies at all, man. And and last, but definitely not least, probably my first big one with 2018, I probably seen Last Jedi again, Black Panther, I mean, I mean, he was one of my favorite parts of the Civil War, and came out coming out with Black History Month, the 15th anniversary of the comic, comic I've definitely been... I am very interested in what this film has offered, given how it has a 90% African American cast, cast and it's been returning players in previous movies, movies that, movies with Bozeman playing Hayes, as well as King T'Challa, T'Challa, as well as, well as Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger the Jaguar, uh, so we've got two different versions of Sherlock Holmes and Hamlet right around, now we're also going to have two different giant storms running around this universe, I just mean, and visually, I still think Wakanda is probably going to be one of my favorite Marvel worlds yet, given how you know, it has a very good blend of tradition. I have tribal motifs as well as modern technology. It definitely looks like, like a world that's actually all its own, given how it's developed separately from everything else. And given how I really enjoy Creed, I might look at that as soon as well as the other Rocky films in the near future, but I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm definitely going to be very excited for this. It looks like it's as advertised, could potentially be like Cree meets Kingsman. I'm totally okay with that. Anyway, let me know what you think 
think of this movie if you have seen it if you have not seen it yet then by all means go do so and maybe I'll think of the Accord when it comes on Blu-ray I'm not sure I mean it kind of happened with the Ross being played hey, by Martin Freeman, so war like that came out on home media, but I guess I'll find out then. That's all I have to say for now. Now, maybe comments, comments on my Google Plus page or in the box below. I will talk to you all later. <laughs>